Shalom family, this is Soldier Sigariad out of Sakari, Chicago. I'd like to start by giving all honor, praise, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashem Hamashiach, Wa Amalak Yahweh Shai. I'm coming at you today with a quick little lesson going into the scriptures and some history. Um, we're getting into the topic of who who is Esau, who are the Edomites, and uh, hopefully establishing the fact that they are the modern day so-called white man the caucasians and i'd like to start right here in the book of first maccabees chapter one and verse one and it says and it happened after that alexander son of philip the macedonian who came out of the land of kittim had smitten darius king of the persians and medes that he reigned in his steed the first over greece and this is going into Alexander the Freak, his uh, his conquest of the Persian Mede Empire, and establishing the the Macedonian Greek Empire, uh, which is actually mentioned to a T, described to a T in the Book of Daniel. But since this is talking about Alexander the Greek, let's go here um, to the Wikipedia page, Alexander the Greek. It says Alexander III of Macedon, commonly known as Alexander the Greek, was the king of the ancient Greek dynasty of the ancient Greek kingdom of Macedon. And I want you to, to keep that in mind, to keep in mind that both history and the scriptures refer to him as a Macedonian, him and his father. It says of the ancient Greek kingdom of Macedon and a member of the Argeid dynasty. He was born in Pella in 356 BC and succeeded his father Philip II to the throne at the age of 20. And real quick, we, we could see that this is history lining up perfectly with what the scriptures say. And, you know, that is one of the very many places we could go into the Bible to prove that, you know, it's not just a fairy tale book, a made up book. It's, it's, it's a book of prophecy, a book of, of history, uh, a, a divinely inspired book. But, uh, going more into this we see here that it says uh he was a member of the argia dynasty now when we click on that let's see if it loads uh the first thing i want to show you is here Salakia. let's see The first thing I want to show you is here. Um, here it says, The Argia dynasty was an ancient Macedonian royal house of Dorian Greek, Greek provenance. They were the founders and the ruling dynasty of the kingdom of Macedon from about 700 to 310 BC. And real quick, this is, this is an ancient artifact from back then. Um, it says, A bronze coin of King Amentus II of Macedon. The early Argia kings often copied the Wolf of Argos coins on their own coinage to highlight their supposed ancestry from the city. So th this is an artifact of, of another Macedonian king, an Argia king. And I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find someone to tell you that this does not look like a modern day Caucasian. And in fact, you know, most Caucasians would boast in the fact that, you know, they descend from these the these these freaks you know the 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 pillaged and killed and established kingdoms but nonetheless this is archaeology showing you the characteristics of how the these ancient peoples look and it just so happens that they look caucasian but going back up it says that the parent house of the Argeids were the Timonids. Now, why is this important? Why is Timonid important? Going back into the scriptures, if we go to Genesis 36, 10 to 11. Here we can start at 10. 
It says, These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau, Reu, the son of Bashemath, the wife of Esau, and the sons of Eliphaz were teeming. So, so Eliphaz was the son of Esau, and his son was Teman. So, so Teman would be the grandson of Esau. And we have here Alexander and Philip II, and these Macedonians of the Argia dynasty claiming descendants from the Temanids. This who they were. So, so this is Alexander and the Macedonians claiming their ancestry from an Edomite. And, and like I said, to keep in mind the Macedonian aspect of it, because if we go further into the scriptures, we can pull up someone else. We go here. Um, the additions to Esther, 16 and verse 10, talks about someone else, Haman. For Haman, a Macedonian, the son of Hamed Hamedatha, Hamedatha, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood and far distant from our goodness and as a stranger received of us. Uh, so, so this is mentioning Haman, another Macedonian, who was around the time of the, the Persian Empire, around the time of uh, Mordecai and Esther, uh, we have this, this dude here claiming Macedonian roots. Um, even down here in 14, for by these means he thought finding us destitute of friends to have translated the kingdom of the Persians to the Macedonians. So this guy Haman was actually trying to you know, to actually like a, a little foreshadowing of what Alexander the Greek would would, would at one point come and do. Um, he was trying to translate the kingdom of the Persians to the Macedonians. But why, why is this guy so important, Haman? We go again back into the scriptures. Additions to Esther 12 and 6. Howbeit Haman, the son, the son of Hamedatha, the Agagite, who was in great honor with the king, sought to molest Mordecai and his people because of the two eunuchs of the king. So now it's calling Haman the son of an Agagite. So at first he called him a Macedonian, and now it's referring to him as an Agagite. And we could actually line this right up with Esther. three and one it says after these things did king ahusuris promote haman the son of hamedatha the agagite and advanced him so you know just correlating uh in both the in both you know esther in addition to esther um that haman was in fact a descendant of an agagite but also macedonian and now why why, why is this so important uh, here, actually, let me get this out. Go to First Samuel 15 and 8. It says, And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. So Agag, the, the Agagites descend from Agag. And actually, it's down here. And right here, 15 and 20, it says, and saw, and, unto, and saw said unto Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek. So Agag was actually the king of Amalek. And we know Amalek is another son of Eliphaz. Right here, we're back in Genesis 36. 
uh, and Timna was concubine to Eliphaz Esau's son, and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. So not only is Timon a son of of Eliphaz, but also Amalek. And, and isn't that a coincidence that both descendants of Eliphaz, um, but both Timon and uh, Amalek, are are shown in the scriptures and historically to be Macedonians. So so that that's tying that all the way back to, you know, knowing Alexander the Greek was a so-called Caucasian, and he ties himself to. The Timonid dynasty, the, the house of, of the Timonids, which go back to Timon, a son of Eliphaz, a son of Esau. And not only that, but we have Haman in the Bible, who is a, also a, a Macedonian, but also referred to as an Agagite, going back to King Agag, which was the king of the Amalek, Amalekites. We, we, have, we have this... The, the succinct notion that Macedonians descend from Esau. And, and that's how we, we could use these scriptures to correlate with history and to prove without a shadow of a doubt that Esau is in fact the white man, the Caucasian, the modern day Caucasian today. And with that, I'd like to say Shalom.